Now, let's assume that John Muhammad didn't run. Let's assume that John Muhammad is not in the, in the campaign at all, that he's not, uh, he didn't elect himself to run. This is what we're going to have. If Kwesi Boche had run as the number one, with Haruna Idrisu running as number two, I have to tell you, this is a deadly ticket. For our analysis, this is the best ticket of the NDC for 2016. This ticket would have been a crazy run for MPP's money. MPP would have had a crazy run for their money. Here is an economist, and Haruna Idrisu is a brutal campaigner. He has held a seat in uh, what a seat that used to be MPP's in Tamale South for the longest time. It doesn't look like it's going to change. He was the only minority person who was mentioned in President Akufado's first session address. He's an astute campaigner. He's a student leader. He is a brutal politician, and he would have given that impetus to the ticket. And Kwesi Boche, as the lead candidate of the ticket, with such superior background in economics, this one, for us as news people, this would have been the real ticket that would have put Ghana on the map. Kwesi Boche, Haruna Idrisu, Akufuado, Muhammadu Baumia, that would have been awesome. I mean, that would have been such a great battle. It would have been like America's uh, election in two, 2000. This would have gone all the way to the wire. I would have counted the votes and counted the votes and never finished counting because this one, we have to look for a ticket like this, where a great minority ticket comes with a great uh, majority ticket. This one will go beyond arresting attention. This one will dominate attention. This ticket, Kwesi Boche number one, Harid Idrisu number two, will dominate attention. It will not just arrest attention, it will dominate attention. This is what the NDC has missed. This ticket would have been a brutal ticket. Let's see what happens next. This is the academic part of our, our conversation. And assuming that we had John Dramani Mahama and Dr. Kobna Dufour, what would have been the strength and, and the weaknesses of, of that ticket? Okay, so the strength of this ticket would have been that uh, Dr. Kobna Dufour is a, a finance person. He's run as finance minister. He's a governor of the central bank. And um, it would have meant that the NDC is making this uh, election about the economy. And the economy is the big deal, so uh, people are concerned about the economy. Every election in an African country, economy is good. So the strength of this ticket would have been that the NDC is making this about the economy. It's going to be boot for boot. And Dr. Kabna Dufo is senior to Professor Mahamadou Baumia. Dr. Mahamadou Baumia, it will have given a measured sort of um, response from Dr. Baumia in particular. And because Dr. Dufo had done deputy governor of the central bank he had done governor of the bank of ghana in terms of bank of ghana credentials he would have been ahead of dr baumia because he's done deputy governor and he's done governor and on top of that he's also done the minister of finance in the mills era from 2009 to 2012 and he was sufficiently successful of course the mpp will have something to say about that but here is a man who has accomplished in the area of financial technocratic positions that had been held and so in terms of considering him and dr baumia would have been Maybe a better match, not an even match, but a better match. The weaknesses of this one would have been that uh, the NPP are going to say that Dr. Governor Dufour is on trial and that issues about Unibank uh, are in the court. But as far as the court is concerned, Dr. Dufour also has quite a bit to say. And that would have been in the opportunities level. In the opportunities, Dr. Dufour will now be able to speak about the things that his lawyers are saying in court will now be able to address his own innocence, will now be able to make accusations against the government. He would have been able to present himself as a martyr for the banking crisis, and that could have been significant. And the opportunity of Dr. Dufour is, as you look at the figures, he would have gone to Ashanti region, his home region, and mounted a ferocious campaign for the party. Uh, the threats of the Dr. Dufour tickets would have been that the MPP uh, in power could have sort of done some rigmarole around the trial in court, and maybe they would have changed the dimensions, frustrated him, called him to the CID, called him to the Yoko all the time in connection with the court case. Those would have been the threats against Dr. Dufour's ticket. But this ticket would have represented the NDC considering the election as an economic battle, as opposed to the one we have, where the NDC appears to be considering the election as an education battle. Let's go to the next one, and let's see quickly what we have. So we also have another ticket that is crazy. Guzi Tano and Isaac Adongo as number two. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that ticket? Augustus Guzi Tano, articulate man. He does have some skeletons in his cupboard. He left the NDC and joined and formed another party, came back. Uh, Tony Edu accused him of corruption in the cassava deal, etc., etc. But what you can't take away from Guzi is his level of articulation and his ability to convince people. 
And damn, if you had Adongo on that ticket for 2020 election, Guzi and Adongo, that would have been another blockbuster ticket. Again, this ticket will also dominate attention. This would have been a very serious ticket. And I think the NDC will be looking into the future for a ticket that looks like this. And I'm sure the media will jump onto a ticket like this.